Well, John Witherspoon, singer of Seven Dust, also known as LJ, is my guest today. We have a great interview coming up. We're going to talk about the new record, Truth Killer, which is phenomenal, by the way. And we also discuss LJ's thoughts on how the pandemic affected his outlook on life, the upcoming tour with Static X, OzFest versus Warp Tour, meeting Robin Williams, and more. It's coming right up. Just a quick note on this one. It is audio only, and the audio breaks up at times. Unfortunately, this is just the cost of doing Zoom. So until I get that dream studio, this is what we have to do. So make sure you're subscribed to the show so you can continue to follow us. I'd love to have LJ live in studio at some point. But for now, we have audio only, and there's still a lot of great stuff in this interview with LJ. Right up. Well, yeah, that's exciting. So uh, how do you feel about this new album, Truth Killer? I'm excited, man. It's uh, it's very exciting. Uh, tomorrow's a release date. The, the response it seems to be really cool with the songs that we've put out. Uh, we went out on tour with uh, Alter Bridge not too long ago in a two and a half week run, and we were able to try the song Fence Out. And man, it was so exciting just to, to try new music and see everyone going nuts and relating to the video and uh, seeing the band, it's just a new energy out there again. You know, everyone's been kind of closed up for so long. It's uh, good to be back out. Yeah. Is there so, is some of the songs like I, I kind of like hinted, is this about the pandemic or is it not? Because like the song Leave Hell Behind, I'm like thinking, is that about like the pandemic ending? But then I also heard you say that you kind of like the pandemic because you had more time with your family. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of both as a double edged sword with that, you know, of course, the pandemic slowed everything down and our music definitely reflects on things that happened over the course of the last two years. But the one good thing about the pandemic was we were able to be with our families and rebuild those relationships. I look at like this summer, this uh, for the first time in a, a million years, I was able to really spend time with my kids that I've never been able to spend time with because normally we've been on the road during the summer for how many years, 20 something years. So those things are important, you know what I mean? And uh, mm -hmm. I, I look at life a lot differently as I've gotten older. So I think this whole album reflects on the fact of how we've grown up and that pandemic, the things that we've gone through. And, uh, uh, the, and also knowing the energy that we thought we would feel coming back out of the pandemic with these songs uh, was exciting to, you know, imagine what it was going to be like and it's already happening. So I think we're, uh, hopefully we're on a good page with this. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I feel like bands take one of two routes. Like when they get, as they start growing as a band, like they either just continue doing the same thing like ACDC or they grow and they start making different kinds of music and uh, different sounds. And I feel like your, your band has, definitely grown when i listen to some of the old stuff compared to this album i don't think either way oh, is better or worse but i love this new album to me this like i think i grew up with the band because I, I appreciate these new sounds uh you know it's, there's a lot of different things going on with this album yeah thank you you know what man I, it's so funny when you run into some of those cats that that of course you love them still but they still look the same way that they look in 1997 when we came out and they don't understand why we don't look the same and why is our music changing <laughs> yeah so, right. you know it's it's okay for those cats to still be around and we love them but yeah. we thank the lord for all those people that have grown up with us like you that understand that it cannot be the same way every time let us grow we've grown up together things change we've had kids uh we have wives people have been through divorces people have died you know it's like everything in life kind of kind of guys change in music i feel you know and uh and if anyone is able to you know paint that portrait it should be us and us, us artists you know yeah i mean i don't know if, how specific i can be about some of these songs but like that uh, first song i might let the devil win oh man uh, that was like a roller coaster like it fooled me and i was like oh yeah. what is the song and then like i don't want to spoil it but wow that's a cool fucking song okay so th let me tell you this i don't want to spoil it either but uh <laughs> a lot of people a lot of people well not a lot but you know people are amongst the circle in the industry thought that that might be not the coolest song to release for a first single uh to us just to go back to what you said you've grown up with us we felt like that song is a mature song and if anyone would understand it, it would be the people that have grown up with seven dust and to me at the end of the day that's probably one of our heavier songs if you listen to the progression and the way the song is built yeah no it's true it, it because it really uh you appreciate the heaviness 
well, I don't want to spoil it, but yeah, it's just like the way that it, you like, I don't know. It's very unusual the way you built that. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm not musical. So I don't know how to say yes. like the structure of the song or whatever, but people are going to, I think people it's, are going to really like it. I, I think that's a good song. It can cool. also be on a soundtrack or something, which you guys have Absol- done a lot of that. Absolutely. My wife says the same thing right and- when she heard that. Uh, but yeah, that's and it's gonna be exciting. I can't wait to put that song in the set and see how it goes over live too. It's just it's exciting about all this new music, man. And thank yeah. you for understanding that. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I love how you have such you have like different you can sing different styles of uh with the vocals. Like you could that one has kind of an R and B flair, but then there's other songs where you're just full on screaming and you can still do all that stuff. Like, have you noticed any limitations with your voice as you got gotten older? I've noticed that my voice has gotten stronger as I've gotten older. Uh, <laughs> That's what it sounds uh, yeah. like. It's, well, you know, just with the, anything, I feel like as an athlete, you know, you you get, you know, you get in your pride. I don't know what you necessarily call it, but I definitely feel more conditioned when I go in. And then that could be too, you know, working with other writers and and staying on top of the game and and uh, being fresh. You know what I mean? And, and taking the craft, you know, you know, taking the craft serious when it's time to get to work. Yeah, that, yeah, because I didn't know. I was like, is this studio magic? Because his voice is like amazing on this record. Oh, don't, well, thank you very much. No, it ain't studio magic, man. I keep it real. <laughs> oh, that's awesome then. Yeah, I got to see. Put, they, put little, they put a little fancy sauce on it, but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, like the song No Revolution. What What is the, there's some very interesting like electronic stuff going on in there. Yes. How do you even make those sounds? I don't know what that well, is. You know, uh, so you don't know what that is. So what's fun about us being in the studio, man? You know, the guys have uh, different uh, instruments at their homes, and then once we get in the studio in pre-production, there's all kind of different toys to play with, and it's just like a a laboratory of us to be able to experiment and do different sounds. And and a lot of times, some of those sounds don't make it, but then sometimes some of the sounds do make it. And there's always a library or just cool stuff to play around with, and that's something that uh, we were able to have time with on this album. Yeah, that's cool. Because yeah, I, I was having this conversation the other day with somebody about how rock really hasn't evolved. And, uh, you know, I was like trying to find the next sound. And I feel like you guys are definitely evolving. And this sounds like brand new. This doesn't, you know, some of the bands, like I said, the ACDC, nothing wrong with that. But, you know, they haven't really changed over the years. You guys are really evolving and, and making a modern, fresh sound, which is exciting, I think. Oh. Oh, thank you. That's so funny, man. One of my one of my good buddies yesterday uh, texted me and was like, "Hey, man, uh, what are you guys doing? I, you know, I like this song, Superficial Drug. Uh, it's a real mm-hmm. different sound." And I was like, "Yeah, man, we're just trying to, you know, evolve and catch up, you know, with some new people and everything." And the next text I got back, he's like, "Yeah, man, uh, I don't know if you take this as a compliment or not, but uh, the song I could see like a band like Maroon Five cover in it." And I was like. Okay, we could take that all the way to the bank, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a very. I thought uh, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a cool song, "Superficial Drug." I thought that. So, I mean, had, I guess. I thought that one had kind of a Lincoln Park sorry, vibe. Oh, very cool. No problem with that. That's a. Uh, that's no problem with that. That's good too. Yeah, it has a cool bass line that's so melodic. Um, but talk about the lyrics on the. There's there's so many great lyrics on this whole record, but the tragedy in my blood. Real words hurt the most. Take your superficial drug. What is that song about exactly? Everything, just being superficial. You know what? You think about, uh, I don't want to get too deep into it, but look at the front cover of the album and look at the child looking at the TV screen and there's nothing on it. And you're just being fed whatever they want you to be, you know, what they want you to see, what they want you to believe. And I just kind of feel like that's what's going on in the world with everything. Once you turn that TV on, you're just listening to what they want you to hear. That's so true. Yeah, that's. That's very yes. deep. Yeah, do you yeah, very deep. It's, it, it all come together. Yeah, do you think about those kinds of things? You posted something really cool on your Instagram. Uh, it was a quote from Sammy Davis Jr. about real success is not on the stage, but off the stage as a human being and how you how you get along with your fellow man. I was like, wow, that's a really cool quote. Absolutely. I still believe in that, man, because I say uh, the, same people you, the same people you see coming up, you see coming down. And I could never take this life for granted. And our music has definitely changed my life and given me a, a life that I never thought I could imagine. Uh, it's definitely been a hard one, but it's uh, been a beautiful thing too. A lot of nightmares, but it's been a dream come true too. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm always so fascinated with people's stories of success. I always like to go like with YouTube. I always go back and check on their oldest videos and then try to find the path. Like, how did they do this? Like, and your guys' path is interesting too. I mean, you you started out and. You know, obviously the band went through some name changes and stuff and 
Uh, I mean, did so you didn't think that this would ever happen? I mean, because you did want a career in the music industry. Yeah, I always wanted a career in the music industry, but I never thought that 20-something years later, uh, we would be getting ready to embark on another tour with the 14th album. Uh, had gone to the Grammys and been nominated, uh, getting ready to go back out on tour, signing a new record deal over in Germany, uh, getting ready to go back overseas and build that relationship again. I mean, it's all, it's a great time, man. I mean... I turned 50 last year, so this is a, this is a, it's a good thing, man. It's it's it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's a good time for music and a good time for us to be together. Uh, you know, I'll talk to you today, so this is a blessing. Yeah, well, so the the latest tour you're gonna uh, do dates with Alter Bridge and Mammoth, and then another headlining tour with Static X, right? Yeah, October, we'll be co-headlining with uh, Dope, Static X, and uh, Seven Dust, which we haven't played with those guys in 24 years. So it's going to be a production. Everybody needs to come out and see, you know, just all this whole summer is going to be fun for something. Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, so so that tour. So uh, tell me, uh, how did you get on the Alter Bridge Mammoth tour? Is that it's, did they seek you out? Or how do those tours come together? Because that's like a great package. Well, we're all... Oh, well, we all, Alter Bridge and us, we're on the same management. And the fact that we've grown up together uh, ever since Creed, <laughs> John Conley's best friends with Mark Tremonti and also neighbors. And those guys are just family. They're, they're, those are buddies. Those are people that we hang out when we're off the road. I was recently uh, on vacation with my family and we were at Mark Tremonti's house. <laughs> yeah. And isn't like his cousin on the one of your album, the covers? Oh, my goodness. Uh Yes, what album is that? Uh, Animosity? Uh, the Kid with the Apple. I hadn't, yeah. seen, well, I hadn't seen him since he's a grown man now. Yeah, but yeah, he was on the front cover of that, one of our albums a long time ago. We never met the kid. Maybe we met him when he was an adult, which was weird. But yeah, it was, you know, <laughs> that was one of Mark's cousins. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, it's interesting, too, is yeah. like with the two, with uh, these band packages and stuff, you guys uh, seem like so you're eclectic enough. You played both OzFest and Warp Tour that seems pretty rare. Like what, talk about the differences. Which one did you like better? I, I love, I love all the tours, especially the festivals. It's like a summer vacation. And uh, it's cool to be able to know that you have enough music in your catalog to cater to both audiences and both festivals, you know, or what, however many different festivals or whatever type of tour you need to go on, you cater towards the, you know, sometimes you might want to, you might want to, you know, bang them out and just rip their faces off but then sometimes it might not be the, the perfect setting so we, we we make sure that we go into it knowing what's going on yeah and have you done like stripped down shows like acoustic only or like where it's just you and stuff like that oh absolutely we went on and actually did an acoustic tour a while ago that went over very well but we look forward to doing that again yeah because some of these new songs especially i could see they, I mean, they're really just such uh, amazing songs. It'd be interesting to hear them stripped down just with acoustic guitar. Oh, absolutely. You'll definitely hear those. Yeah, like, uh, talk about, um, that, going back to the new album, the, the song Everything, the lyrics of that one are so interesting, too. Like, um, what is that one about? Because it's, you know, talking about insecurity. Well, for me, I, yeah, I tell you what, I feel like everything should be the anthem for everyone coming out of this this haze that we've been in to let everyone know that you can be anything and you can be everything. And it's more of a positive song and an outlook on just, you know, being the best that you can be. Well, yeah, but cause it's like, yeah, it's interesting. Cause it talks about insecurity. Like, uh, is that yeah. like a, from a fictional standpoint or do you feel that insecurity? Cause you're so successful. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Everyone feels that insecurity every single day, man. But I think that's something that keeps the blood pumping because if you get too comfortable then things are not good, there you go. Wow. Yeah. Is, what other advice do you have for people, like whether they want to be a musician or just anything for success in life? Like, how do you do it? Because, well, I mean, you've, you've obviously had an amazing career. Uh, just, you know, uh, if anything for a long time, and you, st you still learn, don't ever think that you know it all. Uh, at the beginning, we never really cared about the business aspect of it because all we wanted to do is be on the road and that was it. And then we had to learn that we had to be businessmen, businesswomen, business, whatever you are, gender in this industry, you have to kind of keep your hand on that too. stay true to your art and just have a good time, you know, too. just uh, stay focused uh, and love one another, man. I, you know, it's, don't be divided. You know, that's what I feel 
And then also, if you're in a band, split everything equally. Don't let somebody come up in the house with a Lamborghini and somebody else riding a bicycle. It never works that way. <laughs> Everyone comes to the table with an equal part. We can't do it without each person. It doesn't sound the same. So that's what is a successful thing, too, I believe. That's interesting. Yeah, because I've heard different takes on that, you know, especially if there's one person who does the majority of the songwriting. Do you guys, so you split the songwriting royalty? Oh, yeah, or? we do. We split everything. Yeah, man. And and then it would be foolish for everything to just come from one person's point of view. If I just, you know what I mean? Like, I, that would be selfish, I would think, after we've been in this band together for 30 years. And if I, it was just only me, just me, 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 when I've grown up with this man beside me when his father passed away. I was there when his mom passed away. When he wasn't able to get to the funeral, you know, if anyone understands each other, it would be us in this, in, you know, in this band. And so that's what's another thing I feel like that's kept us together that long is, uh, uh, you know, we're brothers. You know, sometimes we don't like each other just like brothers do, but we love each other at the end of the day. And, and that's a, it's a, a serious bond that's not had been broken. Yeah. How do you stay? To, I mean, is it nice to have breaks from each other? And I know you've done, you've all done like solo projects and things like that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We love our families and our wives and kids. I can't wait to get home to them. Even if it's a three week tour, I get, I can't wait to get back to my house. Yeah, man, we've been doing it for so long, but we do love it when we get out there together too. But yeah, we definitely have, you know, life changed, you know, things change, you know, we have a, you, know, you want to make it back to the daughter's first day at school or the kids first day at school if you could do that you want to try to be here for important things that over the past 20 something years you hadn't been able to be a part of so it's very important and then I look at it like this a friend of mine not too long ago I, even though you know that your kids turn 18 and they they they, they get older and they they're, they're adults but uh the other day my friend looked at me we were at the lake and she said you know you only you only have 18 summers with them and I looked at my daughter she was 15 and I was like I never thought about it like that until it was so profoundly put in my face and that just made things even weirder for me. You know what I mean? Like, wow, that, 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 that takes time down to even smaller. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's so true. It's life is short. And especially you see it with your, with kids. Cause they grow, they physically like change over 18 years a lot. Oh man. Well, think about it like this. My kids, the pandemic, they, how many years, two years, two and a half years, they were out of school. My little girl, and her friend that are back here in the car with us right now, we're in freaking middle school. And when they went back to school, they're in high school. Now somebody's got to have a car. People got jobs. And it's like the, in a blink of an eye, what happened, you know? And I'm so proud of them. And they they were handling it better, I feel, than some of the adults that are like, oh, my God, this is a big change for these kids. So it's been very amazing as a father to sit back and watch the change of the world and the temperature of people and their attitudes, too. Yeah. I mean, so that's interesting that you say the kids, yeah, because kids are definitely more resilient, but you're saying the kids handle it better than some of the adults. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's, it does seem like that time is just such a weird time. And uh, it's, do you feel like things are getting back to normal now? I still feel like the world is kind of divided and just kind of messed yeah, up. I don't know, maybe that's just how it is. Absolutely. But you know what, man, I do feel like it's getting better again and we're trying to get it better, but yeah, that division is definitely there. It's just stay aware. Uh, know the temperature and the spots that you're in is something I believe in. And uh, uh, the music is definitely helping. I can see it in the crowd. I can see it when the tour bus pulls up to these venues and people are out there at eight o'clock in the morning uh, wanting to be the first ones in line to get inside. So it's just, uh, it's a good time for us. And uh, I really appreciate you guys supporting the band and the new album and everything for us in the future. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I, I definitely want to see this uh, tour with, with Static X, I, I don't because I don't know if the uh, Alter Bridge one is coming to Phoenix, but I know the Static X one is with and dope, too. Oh, yeah, we love it. I love Phoenix, too, by the way, man. We have a good time there. Yeah, I, it's interesting. The Static X thing. I was kind of hesitant about this. I was like, I don't know. But then I saw the what they did with the singer and the and the costume. And I was like, dude, that is one of the coolest costumes I've ever seen for a band. Oh. It's amazing. I'm definitely going to have to get one of those masks for my collection in my house. So they already know that. Go ahead and make an extra one or wherever you got to go get it. LJ's taking one. <laughs> you have a lot of cool like uh, memorabilia and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I consider myself. I made this word up. It's called I'm a man <laughs> So uh, Yeah, you like that. So yeah. I collect, I have a couple of buddies and uh, we collect a lot of antique cool things. And so there's a, a few rarities at the house and, and fun things. The wife doesn't let me get into too many creepy things like some of my friends have. 
but I have I have some several interesting things at home that I like. Is there anything you can share that you can tell us about? Oh well, no, we know. Well, so like something, well, something in my bathroom downstairs, uh, down in the man cave. I have a uh, a platinum album that was presented to Ronnie Van Zant from Leonard Skinner. Oh wow! Yeah, that's really cool. So when you go in the bathroom down there, people come out and they're like, "Oh wow!" I'm like, yeah. Well, you okay, so know, you know, my wife is laughing, and uh, that's also I think I have the rattlesnake wine in there with a, a real rattle. You know, and also cobra. That's yeah. cobra wine. Yes. Yeah, oh, wow, that's so. Like, no, it's better that's than amazing. rattlesnake. It's cobra wine. Yeah, you have all this. You have some memorabilia like that, but you also have these like experiences that are, are I think, uh, some more amazing. Tell me about this. I know we got to get wrapped up in a couple of minutes, but yes, sir. tell me about meeting. You met Robin Williams on the Letterman Show. You guh, guys exchanged guh. numbers. Tell me about oh that. Oh my that goodness! Wow, we that's crazy. We did the David Letterman Show, yeah, and we were backstage in the green room, and we knew Robin Williams was doing the show, and. We met him and he was so cool and his energy was just over the top. And he was so friendly and just welcoming. And I remember admiring his tennis shoes. Now, I never knew anything about this. And even nowadays, I mean, years later, you see pictures and he's always got a different pair of really cool tennis shoes on, if you notice it. Anyway, he was so excited that I liked his tennis shoes that he was like, oh my God. He was like, I get these made by so and so. And he's like, this is my number and this is his number. And we're going to get you hooked up. Of course, I never did that because I never thought I had enough money to buy a pair of Robin Williams tennis shoes. <laughs> but just the fact that he was so friendly and gave me his number and gave me this guy that made these shoes for him's number. And we were on the David Letterman show as a kid. That was to me was just like, wow, we, you know, I've done it, man. You know, you put a fork in me. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. That's an amazing story. Just having those interactions and like seeing Stevie wonder at the Grammys and all that. I mean, there's so many stories that you have. Like yeah. My, me, and my, me and my wife sat, uh, was it one row, one row behind Stevie wonder and his family. And I was like, Oh my God, I could like throw something at him. He wouldn't know it was us, but I could say that I did that. I, <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Well, yeah, you're really, you guys will be on on tour. The new album comes out tomorrow. And then I always end up um, promoting a charity or like a nonprofit. Is there something that you've been involved with that you want to give a shout yes. out? To okay. I want to do two Casey pet project here in uh, Kansas where we live. And then also Mark Tremonti's in, what is it called? NDS. It's national NDS, down syndrome. national down syndrome. Oh, okay, great. I will put those two links in the show notes so people can donate if they have a few extra bucks lying around. And uh, definitely yes. get the album. Is there any other like merch or anything that, that people can pick up? Like, is there a, a deluxe version of this vinyl or anything like that? Just go to the Seven Dust page and they'll tell you all that type stuff. Uh, what's going on with all that craziness? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of new stuff for everyone to pick up soon. Okay. Well, thanks so much for doing this and uh, good luck out on tour there. My thanks again to LeJohn Witherspoon of Seven Dust. Once again, the album is called Truth Killer. Trust me when I say, I hear a lot of music, and this is one of the best albums of the year. The John's vocals, the guitars, the bass, the drums, the songs, the production, it all sounds great. So stream it, buy it, download it, steal it, or do whatever you do to get music. And buy a ticket to a show, buy some merch, follow them on social media, and help support the band so that rock stays alive. And if you want to support our little show, your likes, comments, and shares on YouTube and social media help out a lot. And if you want to go that extra mile, you can give us a rating or review. I'd appreciate that. And also make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you watch or listen, because we have some great guests coming up and you're going to want to make sure that you catch those episodes. So thank you for sticking with us. I appreciate you. Have a great rest of your day and shoot for the moon.